Well, I thought it was about time that I did a railway related video. <laughs> so, the opportunity has now arose, or arisen, whichever way you want to say it. <coughs> and a few of us can come back to work, but only on station maintenance. However, I'm going to start with a little addendum to Sundays. I was talking about the Rother, Tillingham and Breed. Well, we're about 12 miles further inland on the River Rother at the moment. Here is Bodium Castle, or to be more correct, crenellated manor house, built by Mr. Dallingrig in the 14th century, because the river at this point, as you can see from here to the castle, the floodplain is very wide, give you an indication of how wide the sea was when it came up at high tide at that point in time. The river itself is in between flood banks and you might just be able to see them there. No longer tidal. They built um, a gate, sluice gate, whatever you call it, down near Rye keeps a more or less constant level on the rother um, except of course when it rains an awful lot in which case you will often see the whole of this area that we can see here flooded you'll see there's now vineyards on those south facing slopes all this land around here was once upon a time owned by Guinness and there would have been ops as far as the eye could see but In fact, even into the 1920s, my understanding is if you were on holiday, say in Royal Hastings, you could buy what they called a round robin ticket. And you would go by train to Roberts Bridge and catch a Kentney Sussex railway train up here to Bodgham. And then you would get on the boat and that would take you right the way back into Rye where you'd either finish your day or you catch the train back into Hastings. And of course you could do it in reverse. Not something you can do now, unfortunately. But here are the level crossing gates. And to be honest with you, I don't think anything has come through these gates since I last closed them back in February on the Friday and half term week when we were doing some filming. Now because we've been very lucky enough as it's in the open air and there's been no more than a couple of people at a time for the last three or four weeks we have been able to restart routine maintenance at the station and I think the lads have done a very good job in the last few weeks strimming, mowing and it's got the place looking reasonable again but there's a lot of the uh, intricate work still needs to be doing but I just want to take you around the station this although much restored it's the building that dates right the way back to the opening of the railway uh, Colonel Stevens simple design following a pattern at Northium and other places we uh, the members of the Bowdoin group that is before I joined them built the toilet block which is very cleverly disguised although at the moment the name is undergoing maintenance Huxford's coal merchants after a local coalman here. That's the toilet block and we built our own extra waiting room there and that houses a small museum dedicated to the hop industry. And right at the very end we've actually recreated a hopper's hut because we wanted to make this station reflect very much the uh, historic aspects and the fact that for many 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 years 
this was the centre of the hopping industry, as I say, being owned by Guinness, most of the land, with obviously a great deal of freight traffic connected with that industry. Well, here is my office. As we walk round, we have the waiting room, station master's office, here's the window, and as you can see, I'll just pan round here. The view from my office on a beautiful summer's day. And people ask me why I volunteer to do a 50 mile round trip to, to work on a railway. What is not to like? about this lovely, lovely setting. But when you look at the fact that we haven't been able to keep the grass down on the other side and all the rest of it, it takes you back. It took 10 years to restore this station and it was reopened 100 years virtually to the day after the initial opening in the year 2000. And if it weren't for the fact that we've been allowed to come back and start maintaining it again, the ground certainly could have gone back into that kind of dilapidated state. We have a lovely lady who looks after the gardens, uh, and although she hasn't been able to do much this year, this little station garden here always gets some lovely comments. See the wide variety of flowers here, lavender, flag irises, lupins, although they're coming to the end of their season now. Beautiful little plants. Daisies, poppies, roses. So it really gives the passengers something nice to look at, and I think you, you do now. People just don't come for a ride on the train. Uh, they want places to look nice. They want things to be able to see and do. But you can see the effect that it has on a railway. I, I'm surprised there's not more appeared, but I think that's probably because we've done a good job of weed killing in the past. But you can see how very quickly, very quickly indeed, the, um, the weeds begin to grow between the tracks. <clears throat> and indeed how... How very quickly the tracks get rusted over. Now... Tenderton is 10 miles that way. We are eventually hoping to be able to restore all the way through to Roberts Bridge, which is three or four miles in that direction. And track has been laid as far as Junction Road, at half a mile further on. You see here, we lay track to the old system. We still have wooden sleepers. using short length of track and they're kept in place on the sleepers by and the professionals will no doubt come and tell me if I'm wrong but they're kept in place by chairs and again I'm blighted by this bright sunshine there there's a typical chair. Let's see if I can maybe get out of the sunshine a little bit so that we can have a closer look. Because a lot of even heritage railways now, they use modern flat bottom track with pandor clips. But we're still using the old the old chair system. And you see here, 
held in place by bolts but to give a bit of flexibility there's a spring like item which is called a key and you have to make sure that they don't fall out if they do they've got to be banged back into place again it uh, gives the railway a bit of strength and a bit of flexibility as the trains go over them there were always two types of track in operation in the old days flat bottom and bullhead track as you don't see much bullhead about now the idea of the bullhead was that it was identical both edges so that once you'd worn out the top bit you could just literally turn the track upside down and you'd have another surface to use. Uh, that went out of favour, as I say, in place of either continuous welded or now perhaps favoured more is either metal or concrete sleepers and fastened by what they call panel clips. <coughs> But anyhow, we have a group of people here who come every Tuesday and I'm rather honoured to be included amongst them, although my contribution is more clerical and admin than, than anything else. I don't have a great number of physical skills. And as you can see, Malcolm is working on keeping the hedge trim. All very cosmetic work at the moment. There he is. But it's nice even if you can only do the cosmetic stuff because when the railway finally reopens, human beings being what they are, they won't want to see wild a garden things gone haywire they will want it to be exactly as it was the last time they visited <laughs> and the only way you can do that is to do the work now so that's why I say we've been allowed to come in small groups every Tuesday so over in the distance there One of the old oast houses. You see that? Let's try and get the focus right. I think that's about as good as we're going to get in focus. Where the hops used to be spread out to dry, and you see the white, uh, the white cones on the top. They could be turned into the wind to get a flow of air through to dry out the hops to go on for brewing. Showing you the hopper's hut. <coughs> There's the toilets and the waiting room. Here, where we have this old utility van, when it's had the latest piece of restoration work done on it, we will have back the Cavell van. One of our members bought this wagon and he bought it just with the idea of maybe restoring it and putting it somewhere. And when they did some research, they found out that it was the van that had been used to bring the bodies of Edith Cavell, Captain Freyett, and the unknown warrior back in the ports to London for onward burial. And so another piece of history that we've been able to have here and incorporate into the whole ambience of the station and again it gives the public something to come and see. <coughs> we also have our own garden here and we grow our own hops. Unfortunately this year well we thought we'd lose <coughs> we'd lose the hops but good news because one or two have been able to come back and do some work we do have a crop growing 
and maybe come September, although we probably won't be having our usual hop festival, we might have enough hops to make some garlands that people like to buy. The two rows over there are the older rows of hops, or three rows, but we've managed to just do enough. The ground's been rock hard, and we've put this new plants in this year. We also have the station master's garden, which we got a few plants in there, but Frank is working down there at the moment. He looks after the station master's garden, Vic looks after the hops. That's, you know, generally speaking, although others help. Uh, we would normally have carrots, beans, uh, onions growing in the vegetable garden, and flowers, dahlias, that sort of thing growing in the flower bit of it. Some rhubarb in the far corner there. <laughs> Looks like it anyway. Yep, that's rhubarb. I don't think there was ever a station master's house here. Oh look, he's growing some tomatoes too, and we had some before long because the flowers are right down there. I wish mine had got that far. But it just gives you a flavour of what you might have found at a country station. If you had a station master's house, he would have had a garden. And uh, of course the hops is part of the remembrance of the hop industry and we've been able to acquire lease call it what you will this nice little section down here which makes a lovely place on a summer's day for people to come and picnic and that basically is an introduction to Bodham Station brings you up to date with what we're doing at the moment. Any of you are even broadly interested in railways, we'd love you when things are okay again to come and say hello. Maybe you'd like to join us here, Tenderton. Plenty of jobs to do on the railway. So don't forget Kent and East Sussex Railway. When we're back, come and support us again please. Thank you.